This is not just a tomb, nor is it an ordinary person who was laid to rest here. This is the resting place of a great Indian patriot and freedom fighter. Who had his humble origin in a home in Palakkad. A great soul, but an unsung hero, lost in the folds of time for the present generation. The only Malayali who was president of the Indian National Congress, Sir Tetu Shankaran Nair. He had risen to fame as a renowned national leader of India in his life. Yet, it is so lamentable that even his memory is faded into oblivion to such an extent that there is no landmark worth mentioning to mark the place where he sleeps eternally. The only monument that remains is this edifice in stone. On the banks of the river Parthapura. Sir Chetur Shankaran Naya was born on 11 July 1857 as the son of Manmail Ramanipanika and Pavati Amma Chetu in Mankara. His early education began in the traditional style at home and continued in higher secondary school, Mangara. He passed arts examination with the first class from the provincial school at Calicut. In 1897, at the 13th session of the Indian National Congress at Amravati, he became the youngest president of INC in the history of the party till then and the only Malayali to hold the post ever. In fact, the Mangara railway station came to existence for the sole purpose of alighting Sir Chetur Shankaran Nair in his hometown. Palakkad Mangara Swadeshi, Kerala Viral Abhimana Bhajana, British Viceroy's Council Angavu, Sarvovari Guruvayra Penda Bhaktanu Vahirana, Sir Chetur Shankaran Nair Ra Vagi Eirinu, E Deepasthambha. The national spirit displayed by many today is no match for the patriotism of Sir Chetur Shankaran Nair. He stood like a rock and never wavered an inch from the principles he believed in. What really stood out in his long glorious career is a courtroom battle he fought against the Lieutenant Governor of Punjab, Michael O'Dwyer, accusing him for being responsible for the atrocities at the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. He made history by fighting against an English man in an English court that was presided over by an English jury. He also resigned from the Viceroy's Commission in protest of the Jallianwala Park massacre, a move which was a great shock for the British. In 1928, he was the President of the Indian Central Committee set up to cooperate with the Simon Commission. The committee prepared a well-argued report asking for dominion status for India. He was critical of Gandhi's methods, especially those of non-violence, civil disobedience and non-cooperation. He believed that these movements were destined to lead to riots and bloodshed. To prove his point, he wrote the book Gandhi and Anarchy, which was published in 1922. In the year 1966, the autobiography of Sri Chetur Shankaran Nair was published by Lady Madhavan Nair. The memories of great leaders like Chetur Shankar Nair will always encourage and make the young people enthusiastic about our country's movement and struggle for our freedom. But it is very unfortunate that we don't have any fixed concrete monuments for a great son of India like Chetur Shankar Nair. So some steps should be taken, initiated to have him remembered in the days to come. Here is one of the greatest sons Mother India has ever given birth to. A fervent freedom fighter who firmly believed in India's right to self-government.
a true Indian whose fearless voice rose against the atrocities meted out by the British government. An Indian whose memories are worthy of being rekindled in the minds of the present generation. Mark Antony's summing up about Caesar would well befit this unsung hero's life too. Here was a true patriot. When comes such another?